Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to take a look at building some budget PCs using PC Part Picker. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so it's that time of year where you've maybe had some money for Christmas, or you're looking to build a new PC for the new year, or that's your New Year's resolution to build your own PC. So, we're going to use PC Part Picker to go through and select some parts to build a budget system. Now this is going to be based around the very low end AMD chips. Now we've got two versions of this, so one is the Ryzen 2200G, so if that's your thing, definitely stay tuned and watch the rest. And also we're going to go for the budget, really super entry level CPU, or APU, the Athlon 200GE. So two systems, very similar specs, but with a few differences. So one of them is going to be under £300, and the other one is going to be just slightly over £300. So if you're in that ballpark and you're not sure exactly what you want to buy, or what you should buy, maybe you watch the rest of this video and it will give you some food for thought. So let's go to the PC and check out the saved items I've got on PC Part Picker already. Now if you want to take a look at these in more detail, I'll be leaving links in the description below so you can check them out for yourself in your own time. And also you can make your own modifications to my saved PCs, so if you want to maybe add a graphics card or change some RAM or change the motherboard case etc you can do all that it's a really flexible little app or web app you can use to work out what is exactly best for you and your budget so with that said let's go to the PC okay so we're at the PC now and hopefully maybe depending on how I've edited this video you can see the screen now at the moment I've got the PC part picker site up now PC part picker is available in various different countries uh, I'm in the United Kingdom so I've selected the United Kingdom but you've also got options for Australia, Belgium, Canada, Deutschland, Espana, etc, etc. You get the general idea. So this is actually a really useful little tool. If you're looking at building a PC, you're not sure what to get, or you're not sure what works with each other, this is fantastic. Uh, you can log in, create an account, save your details so that you can go back to it at a later date, so you don't have to make any rash decisions, but you can get yourself a really good idea of how much things are going to cost. So at the moment I've got two saved lists, and there are a Ryzen 3 2200G system, which is around about 350, and we've got the 200 GE, which is under 300. So let's take a look at the under 300, which is what we've got up on the screen at the moment. So our basic system, I'll run through the ports very quickly, and then we'll go into more depth. So we've got AMD Athlon 200 GE, 3.2 gigahertz dual core processor. We've got an MSI A320M Pro. We've got Vulcan 8 gigs of RAM, uh, DDR4 3000. We've got a Kingston A400, solid state drive for uh, fast boot ups. We've also got a Western digital one terabyte traditional clunky hard disk drive. Again, some of these things are optional. You don't have to have it in there if you don't want to, uh, to save price, save costs, or you can expand them if you want to. Case, we're gonna go with the Rio Toro CR488. That's a, a, a full or a mid tower ATX case. Uh, gives you a lot of flexibility. Actually, this is a, a quite a good price at the moment. They've been reduced. They were originally around about the kind of 50 to 60, 70 dollars in the US. I've just found it now on this uh, PC part picker for 32 pounds, which is a, an incredible price for a case like that. Uh, power supply wise, we've got the Corsair CXM, the 215 model. That's a 450 watt bronze certified semi modular. So, again, the semi modular bronze power supply isn't really necessary for this kind of build, but looking towards the future a little bit more then that is definitely a, uh, a good option if you're going to put a bigger graphics card in or maybe up some of the components in the system. So that is the basic system. At the moment that comes out at £282.39 in the UK. So let's have a little bit uh, a look at the individual components. So we've got the Athlon 200GE 3.2 GHz. Now this has got a 5 star rating on PC Part Picker. It is a, a great CPU or APU for the money. So you get the Vega 3 graphics built in, you get two cores and four threads. So this is really ideal for entry level systems, be it for maybe video editing, uh, making YouTube videos, gaming to some extent. There's no reason why you can't game on this. Obviously it isn't a gaming specific CPU or APU. Those would traditionally cost considerably more. But if you want to dip your toes into the world of building a PC and start getting into gaming, this will give you kind of Xbox or PlayStation 4 kind of territory gaming situations at lower resolutions, uh, maybe not 1080p in all games, but quite a lot of them will run quite happily in 1080p. 
again, depending on your games, what you're playing. So at the moment, you're looking just slightly over £50 for the processor. Now, the motherboard I've chosen on this, the MSI A320M. Now, this, if you're trying to keep it to a real budget, this is the way to go. This is probably one of the cheapest uh, AM4 boards you can get. At a moment, retailing at uh, CCL in the UK for just under £45. There is some shipping and handling on that. If you spend a little bit more money, you get free shipping. So if you're buying a few other things from CCL, then maybe that's the way to go. But if you're going for Amazon, looking at £48, give or take. So with that, obviously, if you're a Prime member, you get free shipping next day, all that kind of stuff. Now, this motherboard is... It's not a brilliant motherboard, but it covers all the bases. So you've got reasonably good uh, coolers on the VRMs, although this board doesn't support overclocking, so that really isn't a concern. But you've got all the, all the normal features there. It's a generally well-rated board with all the connections, HDMI on the back, that kind of thing. So this will definitely get you up and running and is, is good for a good few years. So moving to the memory. Now the memory, this particular APU doesn't support the frequencies that this RAM will do. But again, it gives you some kind of future proofing should you want to upgrade the Athlon 200G to something a little bit faster in the future. Um, again, it's a, it's a bit of a sticking point because the motherboard isn't an overclocking board. Most of the Athlon or Ryzen chips, which are going to be coming out and are out at the moment, will allow you to do a little, some overclocking. But if overclocking is not a thing that you want to get involved in whatsoever, perfect motherboard. The RAM is relatively future proof. You should be able to get the RAM clocked to, I think it's 2666 with that particular chip. So it's good value for money. It's probably amongst the cheapest set I could find at the moment on the UK market. So you could get a, a lower clocked speed RAM, but it's roughly the same price or dearer. So this is the way to go. Now with the storage, again, you can make modifications to this. I've got the Kingston A400 drive, the 120 gig, but you could quite easily go for the 240 like I have done previously you're looking about an extra 10 pounds to double the size of your SSD. But again, we're trying to keep this down to a budget, but you could quite easily put that in there. Maybe use the 250 gig drive, take out the one terabyte drive, save some money there. Then you could maybe get the system down to 250, which for a PC is pretty mad. Now going down to the case, we've got the Rio Toro uh, CR488. This is an ATX mid tower case. Now this case is actually quite mental. On Amazon at the moment, so if you've got Prime, get free shipping, all that stuff, and shipping on cases is generally one of the killer things when you're coming to buy it, because the case may look cheap, but when you come to add-ons or seven, 10 pounds of postage, it puts your case into the next price point. And with PC stuff, obviously, whenever you start adding on five pounds, 10 pounds, you move up into a different level. So for 32 pounds, including shipping with Prime, this is a fantastic deal. Now the case itself is ATX. It's Rio Toro. We've seen some Rio Toro cases on this channel before, and I've always been really happy with them. This one's got uh, ability to put 240 mils worth of fans or radiators in the front. You've got 240 in the top, 120 on the back. You've got full size ATX availability on the motherboard, and a, a generally well built and actually quite a nice looking case. Now, again, if you want to check out for yourself, check out the links. You can find out more for yourself. But for £32, there isn't anything that I can find on the market which comes close to features, performance, cooling, etc., etc. Some people may prefer things like the Coolmaster uh, Masterbox Lite 3.1, but we know what my thoughts are on that. But again, in this kind of system, then maybe that is an option. If you want it to look really nice, but not particularly get very hot, then th that case actually probably would be a perfect solution for this if you were to spend that little bit extra money maybe an extra 10 pounds on the case just to make it look a little bit nicer. And the last part is the power supply. So power supply Corsair CXM, the 2015 model, 450 watt, 80 plus bronze, semi-modular. So again, because I've chosen the Rio Toro case, we've got a side window. So we are actually gonna be able to see inside and see what's going on. So it's really nice to have uh, black cables and also semi-modular so you don't have to connect all the cables if you don't want to. Going back to the case, the case actually has some really good cable management options, so you don't necessarily have to worry about hiding the cables, but with a semi-modular power supply, if you don't want to use all the cables and you want to make life easier for cable management, definitely the way to go. So that is the kind of the real budget option. Again, you could save even more money going for a really, really cheapo, nasty power supply. Um, you could probably get a cheaper case, but not a great deal more. You could trim down the size of the hard drives, all that kind of stuff. Um, 
You could maybe go for four gigs of RAM, but I generally wouldn't recommend that. Not a great idea. AMD processors like dual channel, so unless you're gonna buy two, two gigs, which seems like a real waste of money, I think that is the better way to go. So that is the budget option. Now, the, if you wanna spend a little bit more money, now moving up, the Ryzen 3 2200G, this entire system now, you're looking at 350, well, 341 pounds, so just under that 350. So we're spending about an extra 50 pounds, but we're getting a little bit more for our money. So with this, we get the Ryzen 3 2200G, which is 300 megahertz per core faster than the Athlon, and also the optimizations in Ryzen make it a little bit snappier anyway, um, and it's four dedicated cores. Also, you get the advanced features of the Vega 8 graphics over the Vega 3. So if gaming is more the angle you're going to, the extra cores and the extra frequency and the extra uh, execution cores on the Vega are gonna make it much better for you. But again, like anything, it's gonna cost more. So you're looking at an extra 30 pounds, 35 pounds for that, for the privilege of the extra cores and the extra speed. Also, the Ryzen 3 is overclockable, so there's no reason why, with a little bit of tweaking, you shouldn't be able to get this up to 3.8, maybe slightly higher. So a massive difference between the two CPUs. Now, in order to do overclocking, we've had to change the motherboard as well. So this one, we're going for the ASRock AB350M, which is, again, a really nice little motherboard. It's, uh, you actually can't really see it very well from that picture. It's just generally a nice all-round board, but it doesn't cost a fortune. You're looking at 53 pounds, which for an AMD AM4 board is actually pretty cheap, especially if it allows overclocking. Now, personally, if I was going for the Ryzen 3 2200G, I would probably spend a little bit more and maybe go for the ASUS Tough model, uh, which is the B450 chipset. Again, you're gonna be adding about an extra 25, 30 pounds to the price, but it depends where you're gonna be going and what you're gonna be doing with it at a later date. So RAM, we're gonna stick with the same, the Team Vulcan, because again, the, it was the fastest 300 megahertz, uh, sorry, 3000 megahertz RAM I could find at the moment in the UK. The Kingston Drive, we've gone for the 240 gig, and we've still got the Western Digital Caviar Blue. Stuck with the same case, the Rio Toro, because to be honest with you, I couldn't find anything which was significantly better without spending maybe an extra 30 pounds, which then takes us into that next price point when we have to start looking at other things to maybe upgrade to level up the whole system. And again, the Corsair CXM 2015 450 watt power supply, Seems like the logical choice for this. Again, semi-modular, you've got all the connections you could possibly want on there. It's a great all-round system. So either one of these, if you want to spend under 300 pounds, the 200 GE version, if you want to spend slightly more than 300 pounds, the Ryzen uh, 2200 G is an excellent choice. Uh, both of those systems, if you wanted to, you could add a discrete graphics card to, to level up the performance even more. But if you're going for the brand new market, at the moment, you're looking the uh, GTX 1050 Ti, around about 150, uh, the RX 570, again, around about the same sort of price. Um, if you're spending this sort of money on the system, are you gonna be looking at spending that much on a graphics card? Maybe you are, maybe you aren't. But again, with PC Part Picker, you can just go into the system settings, choose a graphics card, see if it's compatible, and see if the price is right for you. So hopefully that's given you a insight to what goes on in this tiny little mind and also gives you some knowledge of what you can buy for your money on Amazon and other places in the UK. Now, I will be following up this video using pretty much identical specs to see if we can recreate the same system, give or take, uh, for the same money. So my question really at the end of this is, is Amazon still as worthwhile as it used to be? So if you want to see how that video goes, click on the subscribe icon, click on the chime icon, and you'll be notified of all the future video releases. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and this has been how to build a PC for around about 300 pounds. Thanks for watching.